where did we stop? No way. Like the f fermentation. Really? Yes, I know. You said how far behind we are. Alrighty, so I need to really. Any questions, folks? A long time no see, I know. visitor today? Oh yes? Would you like to introduce him? Okay. No problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Any questions? Okay. <clears throat> Any questions? Kind of <clears throat> interesting, yeah. They will come, believe me. They will come. <laughs> well, only one person has withdrawn officially. One. Yeah. Brave souls left. <laughs> so, any question from aerobic respiration? Let me ask you a couple of questions. All living cells go through glycolysis. True or false? All living cells go through glycolysis. True or false? <coughs> It's kind of question because we have not finished anaerobic respiration, so you cannot really compare aerobic versus anaerobic. We have not even finished. Have you finished aerobic completely or not yet? We have finished aerobic? Okay. We have. Okay. We have. All right. You started anaerobic. Okay. So my question is, all living cells, not only bacteria, all living cells go through aerobic respiration. True or false? I said glycolysis, yeah. All living cells go through glycolysis. Um, Orlando, light please. Thanks. <clears throat> True. 
this is where the difference starts actually. Okay, let me show you because that's where we are going to be starting with today. Now, let me show you this. This diagram is on page number 123 in your text. 123. Yeah. Real quick, the, um, in aerobic respiration, with my electron accepted is oxygen, and in anaerobic, it's hydrogen? Not. Not? Not. Yep. Anaerobic. anaerobic fermentation. Have you finished anaerobic yet or not yet? Yeah, we finished it. We did anaerobic. Well, no, because you got into fermentation. That's part of anaerobic. Yeah. So we didn't do that. Okay. So that's why you. Okay. Look at this and maybe you can answer that. All right. Here is the comparison between the two. My first question was all living cells, they go through glycolysis, right? Okay. Here is aerobic respiration on your right, right here. Arabic respiration glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, right? This is fermentation and aerobic respiration. Glycolysis is the only common step between the two, right? The difference is after this step. Fermentation involves only glycolysis. That's it. Your question is, what happens to hydrogen? Who is the final electron acceptor, right? Look at the diagram and tell me, please, what is the final electron acceptor in fermentation? Okay, yeah, this diagram is actually, you see, that's, is wrong, actually. Okay, yeah, this diagram is misleading, wrong. Okay. Your, according to your notes, what did we talk about last time? What is the final electron acceptor in fermentation or anaerobic respiration? Organic, organic compound. compound. Here is the organic compound. If from chapter one, which you remember, what is the? Hydrogen is the acceptor. No, 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 no. Okay. No. What is the final electron slash hydrogen acceptor? Uh, organic, organic compound. Organic right. So when the hydrogen is released from glycolysis in aerobic respiration, they all end up in electron transport chain, right? But in fermentation or, or in anaerobic respiration, there is no glycolysis, uh, there is no Krebs cycle, there is no electron transport chain. So this little truck ends up, this arrow should have gone a little down, okay? It is the end product itself. It is the lactic acid. It is the, the alcohol itself, which is the organic compound. So in fermentation, the hydrogen acceptor, the electron acceptor is the end product itself. One more time. Where does this hydrogen go? Okay, the hydrogen ends up in the end product. End product or the organic compound is the final electron acceptor. Let me show you another diagram in your textbook, which is better. Okay. Mm, okay. Here. This is slightly better. Here we go. Yes. This is on page 133. Look at this right here. This is chapter 1. Okay. Glycolysis. Okay. Chapter 1. A process in which sugar is converted into acid, right? Or sugar is converted into alcohol. Same thing, right? Who is the final electron acceptor? 
the acid right here. You see, NADH from glycolysis goes to acid or NADH goes to alcohol, the end product. The final electron acceptor goes to the end product right here. Why? There is no electron transport chain or there is no Krebs cycle. Okay. So I asked you this, maybe not. Maybe not. Let me ask you this now. Here. I don't know if I asked you this or not. Test question. Did I ask you this question last time? I think I did. Yes. All right. <laughs> you also already. You know. So doesn't matter what the end product is, OK? Acid, alcohol, what type of alcohol, what type of okay, microorganism. As long as they are going through fermentation, they will all produce the same number of ATPs because they are going through glycolysis. They are, not, they are not going through Krebs cycle, no electron transport chain, so they will all produce the same number of ATPs. Okay? Two. All right. All right. Yeah, this is what we did last time. All right. We already talked about this, right? Last time? Okay, good. How about these terminologies? Homo and alcoholic? No, all right. Now this is, okay. The terminology is new. Process is the same. All right. New terminology. Okay, fine. All right. Same process. Bacteria that produce acid. Type of acid may be different. Okay. Acid may be butyric acid. Acid may be formic acid. Acid may be lactic acid. But those bacteria that produce acid, they are called homoacidic fermentation. Name of the acid may be different. Okay. I have two bacteria that produce lactic acid. Glucose to lactic acid. Lactobacillus bulgaricus, normal flora of the female vagina, produces lactic acid. Streptococcus thermophilus also produces lactic acid. Back, not bacteria, yeast that you use for baking purposes. You just saw it in lab. Saccharomyces cerevisiae produces alcohol. Glucose, ethyl alcohol that gives the bread aroma, and CO2 that lets the dough rise. Okay. Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Just the terminology is new, the process is the same from chapter number one. Alcoholic fermentation. How many ATPs are we making here? Two. How many ATPs here? Very good. How about an organism such as E. coli that makes two end products? Acid and alcohol. E. coli, it can make both. Remember, these are the first two. Acid, alcohol, the third possibility is both end products. Acid and alcohol. That's called heterofermentation. Heterofermentation. Third possibility. Right here. The bacteria that lives in our intestine, it makes both. How many ATPs does it make? Very good. Two. That's the end of aerobic and anaerobic fermentation. The last topic of chapter number five is photosynthesis. Okay. Now this is what we just did. 
we took glucose, this is yucky, We took the organic compounds such as glucose, C6, H12O6, glucose, and we completely broken down or oxidized into what? <coughs> Water. carbon dioxide and what? ATP. And we call this process what? Cellular respiration. Cellular respiration. Now we are going to do the opposite. We are going to take inorganic compounds. These are inorganic compounds. This is organic. Now we are going to take inorganic instead of ATP. What are we going to do? Light. Light, which is energy source, it travels in forms of in, in the form of small energy packets called photons. Okay, and we are going to change this into organic. This is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. conversion of inorganic compounds, water and carbon dioxide, into glucose in the presence of light. Okay. What type of organisms are photosynthetic? Autotrophs. Plants, algae, cyanobacteria. Okay. Photosynthesis is completed in two major steps. Light reactions and dark reactions. Dark reactions. Light reactions and dark reactions. Why do we call it light reaction? Because this is the one that uses light. Okay? This is the one that uses light. Remember the recipe, water, carbon dioxide, and light. This is the phase which uses light. Light and water, plus water. This is the phase which uses CO2. Just by looking at the recipe, if I ask you which phase, phase one or phase two, which phase do you think makes the glucose? What would be your educated guess? A or B? or A or one or two. Remember the backbone of organic compounds? Carbon. carbon. So where are we using the carbon? Carbon. So glucose is made in phase two, right here. Because the backbone of organic compound is carbon, and carbon is used in phase two. So glucose is made only in phase two, dark reactions. Okay, let me show you how and where. So 
this is just the introduction part first move oops sorry photosynthesis oops whole thing fell down all right introduction most bacteria are heterotrophs cannot change inorganic to organic they are uh, they are uh, heterotrophs but some bacteria such as cyanobacteria Cyanobacteria, well, I have chosen the blue color. They are green algae, okay? They are aerobic, so blue-green algae. Green sulfur and purple sulfur bacteria, they are anaerobe, okay? They are autotrophs. They are the one that can change inorganic to organic compound. You have it in your notes. Yes, you do. No. The first okay, I'll wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead, wait. Right okay. Okay, while you're writing, I will draw another diagram. All right, <clears throat> light reaction in bacteria is of two different types. One is called cyclic photophosphorylation. Cyclic photophosphorylation. Okay, so light reaction, dark reaction, cyclic photophosphorylation. What is that? Photo means light. Phospho from phosphate. Rylation means to add. Add. Okay. Let me explain. And this process cyclic takes place in aerobic bacteria only. Aerobic such as cyanobacteria. Okay. Cyclic? My fault. Anaerobic. My fault. Anaerobic. Absolutely right. Anaerobic. Yep. <clears throat> Green sulfur and purple sulfur bacteria. Yep. Green and purple sulfur bacteria. This is what happens. The light energy strikes the chlorophyll. Chlorophyll 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 pigments, the electrons of the chlorophyll, okay, 
without the light energy. Their electrons are moving in their orbit normally. Okay. Light, which is form of energy, enters into the chlorophyll pigment and energize the electron. This starts to move faster and faster and faster. Eventually, they jump out. But they move in a cycle. That's why it's called cyclic reaction. Okay. While they're moving in a cycle, the energy of the electron is used to grab a phosphate. Rylation. Rylation means to add. To add. Okay. Phospho from phosphate. Phosphate. A phosphate is added to ADP to make ATP. So the end product of this reaction called cyclic photophosphorylation is ATP. And that's what you just need to remember. This process the light reaction in anaerobic bacteria, light reaction is ATP only. ATP only. On the other hand, in aerobic bacteria, cyanobacteria, the process is non cyclic, one way. Okay. This diagram is in on page 139 in your book. Non in one way. Non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Two. Non-cyclic <coughs> photo Phosphorylation, chlorophyll, loses electrons, but the electrons, they are lost permanently. And this is what happens to your plants and your grass and green plants and algae. And that's why you need to replenish. You need to water your plants or they die. So when you water your plants, you are actually replenishing the lost electrons. Electrons, they jump out, but they move in one direction. Okay, so when they are traveling, okay, one thing they do is, they convert a DP to a TP and eventually they convert in a DP. Okay. In animals, the carrier of hydrogen is NAD. But in plants, the carrier of hydrogen is NADP, is converted into NADPH, NADPH. And this hydrogen comes from the water. And this oxygen goes to the air. So there are three end products. First, oxygen. Two, ATP. And three, NADPH. One more time. The water splits to replace the replenish electrons of the chlorophyll. <coughs> Hydrogen goes to make or reduce NADP to make NADPH. And the third, ATP. Let me show you the diagram. 
in your book. That may explain it a little better than my diagram, both. OK, on page 139, this is cyclic light chlorophyll. <clears throat> Light, electrons excited, they go in a cycle, but they come back. No need to replenish them. The end product is ATP only. In non-cyclic reactions, <clears throat> electrons are lost permanently. Here's the water. Splits. OK. Oxygen is byproduct. End product number one, hydrogens, okay, they are used to make what? Convert NADP to NADPH, okay, and the third end product, ATP, okay, one, two, and three. Not coming from. This is what you're watering your plants right here. That's what I'm saying. Yep. But without, obviously, without water, your plants are dying. There is no your plants will die. No water. Plants is dead. Because if you do not replace these electrons that are constantly lost, your chlorophyll, your plants are losing electrons right here. So when you water your plants, these are the, you are replenishing these lost electrons. OK? Yeah. So how many glucose molecules are made in the light reactions of photosynthesis? None. No glucose is made in the light reaction. OK. Let's look at the dark reaction now. I'm going to draw my own simplified version first. Then we will look at, or maybe I should show you what you have in your book first. This is what you have in your book right here, the dark reaction. OK. Now let me show you my version first. OK. This is on page 140. All right. Dark reaction involves three major steps. dark reactions. <clears throat> First step of dark reaction is called carboxylation. Carboxylation. This is a process in which <clears throat> Carbon from carbon dioxide, CO2, is attached with intermediate compound called RUBP, rubulose biphosphate, to make another intermediate compound. The end product of the carboxylation is this product, GA. 
phosphoglyceric aldehyde. This is called carboxylation. Now, if you don't have the end product from the right reaction, the process will stop right here. Now you need the end products from the light reaction. Second phase, which is called the reduction phase. Needs the end products from light reaction. ATP plus NAD and a DPH <clears throat> from light reaction. In the presence of these two end products, it is converted into another intermediate compound called PGAL. This is the precursor of glucose, mommy of glucose. This is what makes glucose. But not all of this is converted into glucose. Let me show you. This one right here is what makes glucose. If all of the PGAL is converted into glucose, the process will stop right here, right? So part, only part of this PGAL is converted into glucose, and part of this PGL is converted into RUBP. So PGA is actually converted into two things, glucose and RUBP. That's why the third phase is called regeneration. Regeneration. If you do not regenerate RUBP, the process will stop. So to keep the cycle running, only part is converted into glucose and part into RUBP. Make sense? All right. Now let me ask you this. How many times this dark cycle must go through to make one glucose? In order to make one glucose molecule, the dark cycle must go through how many times? One time. How many times? <laughs> Six times. Every time it goes through, it, it attaches one carbon from carbon dioxide. So it, in order to make one glucose, it must go through six times, okay? Because carbon dioxide is only one carbon. So in order to make one, car one glucose molecule, the carbon, this dark cycle must go through six times. Six C6, six, H12O6, six, six times, okay? One, one molecule of glucose, it has six carbons, okay? So the, here is the uh, description of all this, but that summary I think it summarizes everything that what is said right here. Carboxylation phase is a phase in which carbon from carbon dioxide is fixed or attached to RUBP. What is the end product? PGA. If you remember all this, you're in good shape. Reduction utilizes ATP and NADPH from the light reaction to make what? PGAL regeneration. PGL is converted into glucose and RUBP. I like this better, much better than 
all this. Yeah. Much better. Yep. Okay. And finally, this is the summary right here. C6, H12, light into one molecule of glucose. End of chapter number five. Now we start chapter number six. Chapter number six and seven, memorization. But fun, interesting though, not boring, boring memorization, interesting, yep. <clears throat> All right. Six, 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 six. Oh, Ooh. did I? <coughs> oh, no, 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 don't do that. Please don't do that. You have to allow me 30 seconds to go to my office and get the new uh, notes. So these are messed up notes. For some reason, this one will not open. Is Joshua here? No, he's outside. David, you know where my office is. Could you please go to my office and just pick up my keychain, please? From my office, please. Yeah, keys. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, any question from Chapter 5? You want anything you want me to repeat? <clears throat> any question from Chapter 5? Any, anything from chapter, okay. Sure, why not? <clears throat> okay. There are four amino acids in this chain, okay? And we want to break it, okay? By using the enzyme lyase. How many water molecules will be used to break this? Oh, we have three, we have none. Oh, wait, we have third. <laughs> three. None. Okay. Well, in order to break a bond, we need one water molecule. Okay. <clears throat> five. C. Five. D. Okay. Right? Three, four? Four, okay. Anybody from that side? Quiet, not saying anything to <laughs> This side? Okay. The correct answer is? Lies breaks bond without adding water. 
lies breaks bond without adding water. Okay. Don't forget it, okay? All right. All right. <coughs> Experiment starts with five bacteria. What's the total number of cells in the fifth generation? Oh, shoot. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have not talked about that. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, we have not talked. I apologize. Yeah, thank you so much. Which generation, though? Yeah. Very good. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Chapter number six. Microbial growth. <clears throat> Micro or in microbiology, if a cell is getting bigger, 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 growth. A potato, you're a botanist. You're a botanist. A potato, Idaho potato, is getting bigger, bigger, bigger. You should be happy. Your potato is growing, right? In microbiology, your bacteria is getting bigger. That's not growth. Mm -mm. Growth in microbiology is when your bacteria actually divides, splits into two. That is growth. True growth in microbiology is increase in the number of cells. That is true growth. What would cause bacteria to grow in size? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Solute, sure. Yeah. Hypotonic solution. Remember? Hypo, hy hippo. It's bacteria maybe in hypotonic solution is just increasing in size. Or inclusion bodies, right? Sure. All right. Like I saw, I showed you, some of you saw amoeba, right? Amoeba, live amoeba, gobbling up paramecians and other little creatures, becoming big, 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 big. That's not growth. It's just eating and becoming big, okay? Phagocytosis, okay? That's not true growth. So true growth is increase in cell number. That is true growth, increase in number of, of cells. Um, Cell mass may be due to an increase in intracellular storage areas. All right. Come on. Bacterial growth, how do bacteria grow? By binary fission, which is simply, what is binary fission? Yeah. When one bacteria divides into two genetically identical cells, that is binary fission. One, one cell divides into two genetically identical cells. That is binary fission. Okay. Parent cell enlarges. Why? Why the mother gets bigger? Everything. Yep, mom is duplicating everything that she needs to give to mom, to the baby. Cell component, ribosomes, DNA, cytoplasm, everything is duplicating. That's why the mom is getting bigger. Chromosome DNA duplicates, and eventually a transfer septum appears, and uh, the daughter cells, uh, eventually the cell splits into two. I think I have a diagram. Yep, this diagram right here, nice one. <clears throat> Binary fission right here. First phase, so everything is duplicating, transfer septum, and then the two genetically identical cell. All right, let's go back. Back, please. Back. 
back. Thank you. Some microorganisms like fungi, you saw this process today in the lab, budding. A later outgrowth appears on the surface of uh, fungi, especially yeast, unicellular fungi, they reproduce by budding. Okay? Uh, only fungi can do that, bacteria cannot do this process, budding. Or fragmentation simply means breaking down the branch, okay? Uh, fungal branches, they break down and they just grow into other branches called fragmentation. Only fungi can do that. And we'll talk about this more in chapter 12. Only fungi fragment? Yep. Mm -hmm. Hello, something. Okay. This is generation time, my question that I just asked you. What is generation time? Okay. The time it takes for population to double. Time varies from bacteria to bacteria. Some bacteria like E. coli, it only takes about 20 to 30 minutes for population to double. You have 1 million E. coli now, in about 20 to 30 million, or you, in about 20 to 30 minutes, you'll have 2 million, and then 4 million, and then 8 million, and so on. Some bacteria, on the other hand, like mycobacterium tuberculosis, it may take 12 to 24 hours. That's why it's a chronic disease, slow-growing disease, okay? So time it requires for the population to double, okay? So the, the question that I asked you, okay, here's an example, and there's a question. Generation time, first generation, second, third, and so on. If the experiment starts with two cells, uh, do I have parent, okay, two cells. What's the total number of cells in the fifth generation? 32. Okay, let's practice this a little. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> total number of cells, three. One, two, three, four, five. Total number of cells in the third generation? How much? Six. 12, 24. Experiment starts with four cells. Total number of cells in the fifth generation? Eight, 16, 32, 64, 128? Fifth generation. Yep. No, 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 no. First generation should not be here. If that's the case, chop it off, please. Chop it off with a big chopper. Yeah. No, no, no. Please do not. If that is the case, it should not. Yeah. Parents should not be the first generation. No. First number should be parent and then first generation. Okay. Experiment starts with one cell. Okay. What's the first generation? Two. two. Yeah. Two is first generation. And what's the total number in the fifth? Four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Okay. Yeah. Double, double, double. Already. <coughs> okay. Come on. Now let's look at some of the major physical requirements that affect the growth of microorganisms. We are going to talk about five major, I think five, yeah, four or five major, starting with temperature, then pH, osmotic pressure, and then gases, four, I believe. Okay, so temperature first. Each microorganism, it has its, oh, okay, pH, osmotic pressure, and gas, 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 okay. Temperature. <clears throat> Each microorganism, it has its minimum growth temperature, which is defined as the lowest temperature at which the growth of that organism is possible. Then we have optimum growth temperature, which is the, yeah, is the optimum growth temperature at, did I say maximum? No, the optimum growth temperature where the growth is best 
which is not suitable for all cellular activities. We talked about that before, right? Yep. Optimum growth temperature is not suitable for all cellular activities. And then maximum growth temperature. The highest temperature at which the growth of the organism is possible. Now on the, the basis of temperature, most microorganisms, there are always exceptions, most microorganisms, they can be classified into three major categories. Microorganisms that grow in your refrigerator, they are psychrophiles, cold loving. Psycho, psycho, not psycho, psychrophile. Mesophile, moderate temperature loving. And then thermophiles, heat loving. Temperature range for each category is Psychrophiles, their minimum growth temperature is zero. Optimum, 15. The highest they can reach is 20. Below 20, they will not grow. For mesophile, mesophiles, 25, 37, and 40. And for thermophiles, 40. And maximum is 80 degrees. In your notebook, if you please designate a little place, small place, where you will write down five terminologies. Most human pathogens, and put the title, most human pathogens are, and on the basis of temperature, the first term that you will put under the, that is, according to the temperature, are mesophiles. Meso, mesophiles. Okay. <clears throat> pH, second uh, factor, physical factor, pH. What is pH? Hydrogen ion concentration or acidity or alkalinity. Okay. Again, on the basis of pH, you can classify most organisms into three categories. Acidophiles, neutrophiles and alkalophiles, acidophiles. Imagine something growing at this pH. Concentrated sulfuric acid. Put your finger in concentrated sulfuric acid, what do you have? Bone. Bone. And imagine something growing in that right there. What grows in that? What causes peptic ulcer? H. pylori. The bacterium that causes peptic ulcer, H. pylori, can grow at this pH right here. Fifty years ago, it was thought that peptic ulcers are caused by stress. There are some still, some ulcers are caused by peptic ulcer, but Austrian scientist, okay, he discovered that this bacterium, not this one, where would you find this bacterium? Right here, Sulfolobus acetocaldarium in nature. Sulfur mines. Okay, sulfur, where they harvest sulfur in nature, sulfur mines, okay. This non-human pathogen, but this one, second one, H. pylori. This is how it looks like. Yeah. Come on, you are not yet, you, later you, H. pylori. This is the one that's human pathogen, that's how it looks like, okay. Algae. There are some algae that are acidophile, cyanidium caldarium. That's how it looks like. And if you leave your fruits on the countertop and don't eat them, citrus fruits especially, okay, what grows on them? Not bacteria, 
two reasons fungi prefer to grow on citrus. Number one, they prefer to grow at acidic pH. And secondly, they have the enzyme that can digest the hard covering of the fruits. Bacteria don't have the enzyme that can digest this hard covering. And fungi, they prefer acidic environment. So this is the bacterium that causes peptic ulcer, Helicobacter pylori. Okay. <clears throat> Neutrophiles. This is where most human pathogens belong. So your next term that's going to go under this, according to most human pathogens, is neutrophiles. Neutral. Neutrophiles. E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus. Alkalophiles. Imagine something growing in bleach. Okay. The first example that I have, okay, that's actually an opportunistic pathogen that grows in the large intestine of humans. Okay. Alkali genes for callus. Come on. Yep. This lives in the large intestine along with E. coli. Like E. coli, it is opportunistic pathogen, doesn't cause disease, but it's opportunistic. This is the one that can grow in bleach. Bacillus alkalophile. That's how it looks like. Okay. Um, when we grow bacteria in lab, all bacteria they produce acid or alcohol, right? Now, if we do not add buffer in our media, bacteria will commit suicide, right? When bacteria grow, they produce acid or alcohol, so we must add buffer in our media to neutralize those changes. Okay, so the most common buffer that we add in our lab, in our lab media, is called potassium phosphate. So as soon as bacteria produce acid or alcohol, they neutralize it. Okay. <clears throat> Next um, factor is osmotic pressure. Microorganisms that can tolerate high osmotic pressure in their environment. What do you call them? Osmophile. Osmophile. They don't demand that you give them high osmotic environment. They can tolerate it. Okay. Osmophile. That's the key word. Okay. Can osmophiles cause human disease? Can osmophile cause human disease? Okay, you just looked at the results last time in your lab. Uh, recalled your mannitol salt agar plate. Mannitol salt agar plate, the bacteria that turned your plate yellow. Staph aureus, osmophile, human pathogen. Yes, so osmophiles do cause human disease. Absolutely, yeah. The key word here is they can tolerate, they don't demand. There are some that demand high salt concentration. They cannot. Okay, so they are coming up next. Okay. Come on. Those that do not demand, but they can tolerate high, um, they can they can tolerate high uh, solute concentration. They're called facultative halophile, such as Staph aureus. It is. It's range. Do you have staph on your skin now? You bet you do. Okay. Its range is from 0.9% to 7.5%. It's on, growing on your skin. But if you take a, take a swab from your skin or from your nose and put it on mannitol salt agar, which is 7.5%, right here, it will grow, but it is also growing on your skin. So it is, its range is this. It doesn't demand that you give it 7.5%, okay? So let's stop here. We'll continue next time. Good day.
the lecture because um, I can't find the one for the last class. The only one I come up here is nine. Okay, you can bring me your thumb drive. I can give it to you. Oh, sure. Sure. Okay. sure. Not now, in my office. Okay, okay. Because I have a lab right after this. Oh, okay. okay. Yep. Sure. Okay, yeah. Okay. I, I tried to get them. The last one I came up with was nine, and I think that was like six. No problem. No problem. All right. It's okay. okay. Sure. Okay, so for class today, we still um, prepared for a free lab quiz for experiment seven for Thursday? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Oh, okay. So, yeah. what mm -hmm. time are you going to be in your office? 2.30. Mm, yeah. And it's mm -hmm. on building one. Yes, yeah, same building as the lab. Oh. Yep. Yeah. 2.30. 2.30.